One of the most common asks when I'm asked to build dashboards for clients is some sort of what if analysis or forecasting. And today I'm going to show you how to do this in Looker Studio. So this is what we're going to be building today. This is a sales forecast for a supermarket and there is current month figures in there. There's current month cost in there, but there's a forecast out to the next month as well. And how we've set this up is that we have parameters in here in order to build out this forecast. So we've got a sales growth forecast in here, which we can alter. If I put up that to one, one, you can see the sales has gone up. And then we have a inflation figure, which we can alter as well. So I have a 2% inflation in here, and I have a, a target for cost as a percentage of sales. And in sales, I just have an arbitrary target in here. So let's go into um, a blank forecast and we can start building this out. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add parameters. And to add parameters, you can go in down here into your data source and click add a parameter. And the first parameter we're going to add is cost growth. And this is just essentially another parameter, which is the same as our inflation parameter I showed you earlier. And this is going to be a decimal. This is going to go from a range. So I'm allowing values in here from minus one to one. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to add another parameter. I'm just going to call this growth. And this is our sales growth parameter. This is going to be another decimal in here and a range from minus one to one. And to make these active for users, you need to provide them within a control. So I'm going to click control here. And I'm going to put an input box in under cost inflation. I want to put in my cost growth parameter that I've just created in there into the control fields. And now I can add my cost inflation. So for sales, I want to do the exact same thing. I want to add a control. And then this control also is going to be an input box. And in the exact same way, I just want to put my growth parameter in there. Now, these are available to add data into, but first we need to set up some calculated fields. So I've got a couple of calculated fields in here. I've got a forecast growth and I've got a forecast sales. And I also have a target forecast cost in here and a target cost. And I use these for my comparison figures. So you can see these ones here is just forecast sales or sales multiplied by 0.7 and that is my target cost. So with these fields in here, forecast cost, what we can do is we can just multiply these by the parameters. So for my forecast cost, I want to include my cost growth and my growth. So I want to multiply the cost, the current cost in the current month by the sales growth, which is just my growth figure. So if sales have gone up 10%, my cost, assuming it stays the same, is going to go up 10%, plus the cost growth is any inflation here. So I'm going to update that there. So that's my updated cost. And then my forecast sales is simply going to be my sales multiplied by one plus my growth. So if sales goes up 10%, then that's going to be reflected in my forecast sales. So just to set this up, I have forecast sales in the box. Um, and then in my cost, I've got forecast cost in the metric. And then I want to put in also my target forecast cost into the target metric. And this will be the exact same as my current month at the moment because I've got no figures in here. I'm just going to change out the period here because all my targets uh, for sales anyway is based on one month and we want to forecast out one month. This data has a lot of months in it. So we'll take February 2024 and in February 2024, I, I'm going to forecast out for March. So in order to forecast out and see if things are meeting my um, cost and sales targets, I can put in a cost growth and I can put in a sales growth. So say I have inflation of 2% over the month, you can see my forecast cost has gone up 2% and my percentage of my target, which is 70% of sales has increased as well. And then if I put up my sales growth by 10%, you'll see my forecast sales has gone up 
from 1.17 to 1.29. And my forecast cost has also gone up, but stayed within the same percentage as it had when we set the original inflation. And then I can bring this out into also my details by category. So you can see my details by category near. I have a current month sales and a cost in there, and that's by category. And I can drag in my forecast cost and my forecast sales into this. And this is really the power of creating small parameters. And then you can see that we can look at this on a category level, which there is 43. But we can also drill down into this chart and look at it on a product level. And now we have 601 individual forecasts. I know we're using the same cost inflation and the sales growth, but we can forecast out for each of our products. So I hope you found that video useful. Just a really nice functionality within Looker Data Studio that lets you forecast for cost and sales. And you can extrapolate this up into a much wider set of parameters if you want to do more detailed forecasting.